So let's have a look at some basic kick drum synthesis. I've loaded up Operator, followed by a Spectrum, and I'm going to be hitting some low notes on the MIDI keyboard. A G, that's a nice note to go with. That's a really good subby tone for the kick. And as you can hear, by default, Operator starts off with a single oscillator on sine wave. I'm going to make a couple of other quick changes. By clicking on the global mode, we'll take the voices down to one so that we're literally going to get one note at a time and every successive note will cut off the one before. We don't want to, to be playing chords or overlapping our kick drums in any way. And I'm also going to change our mode here. So this is the algorithm and we'll change this so that operators behaving like a subtractive synth. That's to say that none of these oscillators will be modulating any of the other oscillators. There's no frequency modulation happening. And again, A, that's great for making kick drums and B, also if you're using uh, another synth and the most popular or rather the most common R subtractive synths, you can easily port this information across to those. Okay, so we've got our subby tone, but what we need to do is create a click, a punch, and a tail. So the first thing we'll do is start on the punch. And if you remember, what we're going to do is start with a high pitch and very quickly move that down to a low pitch, which will stabilize and be the tail. So to do that, we'll enable our pitch envelope, crank it up to 100% so that it's having maximum effect on the sine wave. And straight away, and you can see on the spectrum, How that's taking effect. But what I'm going to do is take the highest point here, the peak value, and make that 48 semitones. So we're starting four octaves above our G tail. Really over the top. But the good thing about this is it's given us a lot more range to play with on the pitch envelope. And so we can adjust our kick really easily with just this one parameter. Now, the next thing is at the moment, we've got our decay at 600 milliseconds. And I mentioned before around 100 milliseconds. To be fair, depending on the shape of the envelope inside of the synth, you may want to push that decay a little bit higher in order to get the sort of thwack that you want, maybe even as far as 200 milliseconds. So let's have a listen to this change. So we can hear that being really punchy. It's got that sort of side trance sharp punch to it. I'm going to back off now on that pitch envelope. So we've got a nice knock. So that's taking care of the punch. And we've obviously got the tail, but that's not dying down at all. So let's take care of that by going over to our amplitude envelope for this particular oscillator. So what we're going to do here is bring down the sustain. So we've got a really short kick now, and then we can increase the decay to get that tail. Let's turn this up a touch. And what I'll also do is just match the decay with a release. So that if I just tap the button, we get the similar sound. Now, depending on the synth you're using, you might have more flexible envelopes that have slightly more advanced stages than just the standard attack, decay, sustain and release. Operator actually does have this advantage in that also in here, we've got an initial value. So if I just move this attack along, you'll be able to see this in action. I can bring the initial value up. And what that's gonna allow us to do, rather than start at zero um, volume and then take X amount of milliseconds for the attack to get to maximum volume, I can start at maximum volume and use the attack to hold it there. And this is particularly handy on drum sounds if we want to have a really sort of loud punchy part at the beginning of the kick. 
So I'm going to make this punchy part around 100 milliseconds. That is going to match pretty much the 100 millisecond decay that we've got going on for the pitch envelope. And then I'll have this decay set in. And now what this is doing is really just determining the determining the decay on the tail of the kick. So it's kind of like saying, OK, this bit's all loud. This is the punchy bit. And then the decay is going to be how long I want this tail to take to die down. Let's have a listen to that. And if I bring that attack all the way back, this is pretty, pretty much what we had before. And bring it back in. Working nicely. Now, of course, when you look at the kicks, you can see from the waveforms, they all act differently. This one's got sort of 12 milliseconds of volume at the start before the tail kicks in and starts to die down. This one actually works the other way. It does have a little bit of a, a slower attack before you get to the, the tail that then dies down. So you can see there's no hard and fast rules. And just by messing with the parameters that we're using here, you can get a really wide variety of kick sounds. So that's nice and punchy. I like that. All we need now is to add something clicky at the start. So let's use one of the other oscillators for that. I'm going to select a bright wave. So let's have the saw D. So it's got lots of harmonics. I'll just turn it down a touch because it's going to be maybe in fact, no, I won't need to. I'll just gently increase the volume of the oscillator so you can hear it in action. So you can hear a really, really bright sound. But of course, Going back to our click, we want that to be super, super short. So again, I'll bring the sustain down and I'll bring this right in short, maybe somewhere around that 10 millisecond mark. Let's turn it up now. And we can even use the course to bring it up a few octaves. And if I just have that play on its own, so you can hear what it's doing. And there we have it. So we've got the click on oscillator B and we've got our punch and tail on oscillator A. And simply by altering things such as the pitch envelope amount and the decay to change the punchiness, how long the punch is and how exaggerated it is, if you like, or how soft it is. So perhaps we could say how hard or how soft it is. We've got control of the punch. Then here, we've also got control of the volume of that punch, or rather how long the kick stays super loud at the beginning. Or if we want, we can have it a little bit quieter to start with. So just these few parameters will control the punch for us. And then, of course, we've got the decay. I've linked that to the release, but the decay on its own would suffice if you're going to hold the key down. And that's going to be how long that tail takes to die down. And then we've got oscillator B where we can just look at the volume, the type of the wave, bringing that to minimum sustain and playing with the decay for how long we want the clickiness to be and what octave we want that to be. And as I said, you could use white noise and all sorts. So really simple, uh, literally a handful of parameters to play with and a ton of different kicks that you can create.